Hello, my name's Tyler Jones and I own uh, Aftonfield Farm uh, with my wife Alicia in Corvallis, Oregon, so not too far from here. Uh, so we're very involved in the Portland community um, as well as uh, Salem and Eugene and Corvallis and Albany and uh, any of those other places in between there that also exist. Um, and uh, we produce uh, meats, we raise livestock, um, we use sustainable uh, pasture-based methods um, using uh, sustainable uh, rotational grazing, uh, multi-species, managed intensive rotational grazing. And I learned most of these methods uh, working at a farm back in Virginia called Polyface Farm uh, with a world-renowned sustainable farmer, Joel Salatin. Uh, a absolutely phenomenal speaker, by the way, if you ever get a chance to hear him speak. Uh, he will blow you all away. Uh, I'm not planning on trying to do that today, however. Um, I'm going to talk about something that is very near and dear to all of us. So uh, you know a little bit about me now. Um, so how many of you out in the audience are farmers? Two, three, okay. So maybe not very many. Um, we're in Portland, so I understand. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, pasture out back. So, um, how many of you eat food? Please raise your hand. <laughs> Excellent, because in about uh, eight minutes or so, you will get to do so. Um, but until then, we're going to talk about food. We're going to talk a little bit about um, what we're eating today. And uh, some of us might argue that we might not actually be eating food all the time. Um, and I would be one of those people who would say that. Um, we're we're actually finding ourselves to be rather unhealthy here in America. Um, you know, we've got uh, heart disease uh, continuing to increase, um, strange cancers cropping up all over, um, lots of issues with uh, food intolerances that didn't used to exist. And so some of us are starting to ask the question, what, what is going on in our, in our culture? What is happening in our food culture? Or do we even have a food culture? And so as I, as I considered what I was going to talk about today, because there's about five million topics around food that I could talk about, um, I, I decided to land on the idea that we, the consumer, are the problem. It's not big ag, it's not, uh, it's not the farmer that's the problem, it's not the politician that's the problem with our health and our food production in the United States. It's us. It's you guys. It's me as a consumer, as a person who eats food. We are the problem in the United States with food production and distribution and consumption. And I think that we need to maybe not rely so much on uh, the government or you know, the USDA, the FDA, all these different um, organizations that tell us what we're eating and how we're eating and, and when we should be eating it or not eating it, all that type of thing. I think we should, we, you know, we should not be relying upon all that information as much as we do. Um, we also should not be pointing figure, fingers at the big you know, corporate companies. I mean, the corporate companies are just producing what we're asking them to produce. So um, basically, we are the problem with America's health, with the, with the food that we are consuming that is not really food. I mean, there's all kinds of synthetic products out there that we're consuming with our food. Um, that uh, our bodies are having trouble with right now. I mean, there's, there's the rise in gluten intolerance and lactose intolerance and asthma in children especially. Um, and a lot of these problems are having to do with our bodies saying, okay, this is enough. We, we can't handle this anymore. We need to go back to the basics. So we are the problem as the consumer. We are the problem but we're also the solution. And so I, I want this talk to be encouraging as well, obviously. We're not just here to, I mean, I don't want to bum you all out right before you go eat, because obviously <laughs> you're going to have to eat. So, 
Um, so I want to encourage you uh, also, or exhort, which is the word exhort means, uh, or an exhortation, is to encourage or to implore or to, you know, really with all my heart hope that you get what I'm trying to say. Um, I want to exhort you to realize that you're also the solution. And when you go buy food at the grocery store, when you go buy um, food at a farm, which I would highly encourage, um, <laughs> uh, when you go to get that bag of chips um, at uh, Safeway or you know, your local place down the, down the street, um, instead of buying the chips that you recognize the quickest, because that name is everywhere, um, buy the ones that you, uh, you know, that are like, you know, down toward the bottom or, you know, off to the side, and, you know, you flip the bag around, you take that extra second or two to flip the bag around, see where it was bagged or where it was produced, you find out, oh, it's Eugene, Oregon. Well, shoot. Oh, this one's two, three dollars more, but it's local. This is fantastic. When you, when you spend your dollar on a food that is produced more locally, that's very possibly produced with, with products that actually came from there, near there, you are encouraging and, and experiencing a health change. And so as we spend our food dollar, we are dictating what is produced. So if we don't necessarily want to see all the junk food that is out there on the shelves, we need to just stop buying it. That's how simple it is. Because producers are only going to produce what we buy. So if we stop buying products that, we, that are hurting us or that are uh, making us sick or that are you know, causing us to be intolerant of them, um, then it's, it's very simple. Just stop buying it and then it will stop being produced. It's a supply and demand issue. Um, and so we can be the change that's a rather cliche thing to say, but we, we can very simply be the change by just spending our food dollar in a different manner. So, I want you to imagine eating food that makes you feel good. This little girl really enjoyed whatever she ate. <laughs> it's all over her face in more than one way. Imagine animals re being raised in their um, natural habitat. Imagine kids growing up wanting to be farmers. Imagine knowing your food producer so well that you call him your friend. Imagine aromatically pleasing farms. <laughs> Imagine eating less and feeling more satiated. Imagine being healthy and fit. Imagine a decrease in heart disease and cancers and autoimmune diseases. Imagine food with flavor. Imagine food with integrity. Imagine healthy pastures, farms, rivers, and streams. Imagine adding a food share or a farm share to your investment portfolio, or to your health insurance policy. <laughs> Imagine eating food that doesn't have chemical and antibiotic residues in it. Imagine a decrease in lactose intolerance, uh, uh, gluten intolerance, and asthma. Imagine cows eating grass instead of grain and in doing so, basically eliminating the whole E. coli problem. Imagine a cow in your face. No. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just had to say it. That's one of my favorite photos my wife took. Um, imagine animals living a healthy life and only having one bad day. <laughs> imagine food security true food security. And we are the ones, we, the consumers, are the ones 
that can produce this true food security by spending our dollar on food that is healthy and that will keep us strong and that will keep our kids healthy and carry us on. May we be the ones that make history. Thank you.